Hello and welcome to another episode of Lockdown Dads. I am James Miller, author of Dads Don't Babysit, editor of WorkingDads.co.uk and father of two children. And I'm joined as always by... Ian Dinwiddie. I'm the founder of Inspiring Dads, a coaching business that helps stress dads to balance work and fatherhood. I've got a couple of kids as well. My two are 11 and 8 and they're back at school this week, which has been great for everyone. Um, this week, we're delighted to be joined by a friend of the show, um, Brian Ballantyne. He, he sometimes works at Amazon, apparently, but also he's an author. Evidence there. Yeah. Confessions of a Working Father, great little read, and he is also the co-founder of Men for Inclusion. Brian, welcome to the show. Very nice to be here. Good to see you both. So, Brian, we, we kick things off um, every week asking the same kind of question. Um, how are you? Uh, it's, um, yeah, it's a, it's a tough question to ask a man, isn't it? Because often you just want to go, yeah, fine, all good. But it's been a bit of a shit week, really. Uh, I'm how, how would I describe myself? You know, I've been anxious, stressed. Um, yeah, you know, I guess the context of that is we just moved into a new house, which is stressful in the snow. Um, me and my wife seem to have different priorities about the order in which we need to tackle things, which um, our 14 year old is transgender. And my wife and I've got different you know, opinions about whether we should pursue that or not. Uh, they're talking about suicide. So yeah, it's been quite a stressful week, really if I'm quite honest. <laughs> well, you've got to be honest. I think that's the best way to be. Um, you know, we're always encouraging people to talk about it. And, you know, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't get any better if you don't, don't talk about it, do you? I mean, I don't know. I, you know, actually, I might come on to my, my tips might feed into <laughs> some of the stuff we're, we're you're talking about there and how to resolve it. But yeah, that sounds like a lot to deal with. I mean, you know, moving house would be enough frankly <laughs> yeah. and then working as well you know six months ago I picked up a new role uh, in Amazon now managing teams in India Europe and America so there's like my days are getting stretched maybe I haven't gone to fight for my boundaries as well uh, no, no, I'm just, no I used to be going like on several walks every week during the week and now I've kind of lost that so I'm just having to kind of fight put my boundaries back in place I've recognized that I just need to you know stop that and start carving out more time for myself um you know, just saying no to more things as well. Okay. Mm. You know, when you start to feel like you're reaching breaking point, you know, like a, you know, like a mobile phone when it says like no zero percent battery. You need just just connect charger. I just feel like I just need to connect my charger and uh, get myself back on track again. It's, it's something we've come up with time and again in this podcast, haven't we? It's, it's the you know the the airplane analogy or whatever, it, however you want to put it. You know, it's to put on your oxygen mask before anybody else because you're no use to anyone. Uh, you know, if you haven't got your own oxygen mask on, I think that's exactly. Really and, you know, yeah. the fact that you've, you've clocked that, I think, is, you know, you deserve credit for that. You know, that, that's when you get caught up in such a lot of stress and anxiety, being able to step back and go, hang on, right, I need to look after myself here. Um, you know, that's, I think, yeah, so much true. worthy in itself. Yeah, because I've spoken to a couple of friends who are on burnout leave or have done burnout, and they had no idea it was coming. And, you know, a doctor had to tell them, like, you've burnt out, and then they just spent a month in bed not able to do anything. Wow. So it's like a kind of this energy credit card that, that kind of just hits you. So, yeah, I think, you know, I'm not an expert on it, but mental health, especially for men, I think it's pretty important. And it's good to be able to talk to you about it. I think, when you know, you know even just talking about it now, um, it starts to process that and, you know, feel like it's, you know, it's not the earth shattering thing that, that it kind of manifests as in your head. Yeah. So yeah, how are you guys doing? Yeah, no, I think, yeah, <laughs> just to pick up on that, I think, yeah, absolutely getting it out, out loud and talking it through is, is really important. And particularly with people who perhaps aren't in your household and, and part of that, yeah. but, you know, feeds into something I keep thinking about with men and friends and stuff like that. I'm not quite sure where those thoughts are going at the moment, but I do think there's something there about, uh, you know, men having, networks that they can talk to and, and you know share their thoughts and not just go what about the football then not there's anything wrong with talking about football i'm all for that as well <laughs> but you know there has to be other levels of conversation but that's something for another day maybe we need to think about that yeah i think that's a big topic i'm happy to talk about that but maybe we should let ian say something go on, ian come and join uh, the conversation well, I, mean, I mean i guess <laughs> i'm i'm, I'm hoping I guess for you brian just a quick question is what sort of plans do you have for the weekend that are going to sort of help you help you with how you're feeling at the moment, I guess? Uh, well, again, this is a point of contention. Uh, my wife rolled her eyes at me when I'd forgotten we were going to the furniture shop tomorrow to look at the sofas. And I was like, hang on a minute, don't roll your eyes, you've got a lot going on. Hope she's not listening to this. Anyway, um, I've got to go and get a COVID test tomorrow. Um, we we'll probably go, need to go to the tip, get rid of some stuff. Uh, my priority of gardening apparently is not the family priority. So 
unfortunately don't get to hack at the garden which is i know quite stre quite stress yeah, relieving yeah, it is isn't it? <laughs> yeah. um so uh yeah what else um what more i've got a friend coming around on sunday their 11 year old wants to play with our 12 year old at minecraft um so apparently minecraft's had a big comeback hasn't it like it was all Fortnite and then yeah. among us I don't, know about, I don't know how old your kids yeah. are, but no, it seems about Minecraft is almost kind of retro now and I'm like playing with Lego and stuff. So anyway, um, uh, um, and also I've got to you know, write an essay. I'm doing like an open university degree just, you know, for fun. Um, so I've got to write an essay about something or other. Uh, it's in English literature. Um, in fact, it's about you know, Michael Foucault's essay, What is an Author? And I've got to apply that to some 18th century texts. And it's kind of, you know, and James and I have both written a book and like the idea of what is an author and all that kind of stuff. So I've got to, I've got to write yeah. something about that. So yeah, I've got a few bits and bobs going on. Maybe try and go for a walk. Good. Work, yeah. work in progress. Good. I, I didn't <laughs> want to, I didn't want to just leave it sort of like that. Um, so just, just quickly about my, sort of my work, um, like I said, kids, kids are back at, um, back at school, which has been great. They've really enjoyed it. Um, I've done some video recording this week for the new dads accelerator, which is going to be my, uh, my program that's coming out my coaching program. Uh, we've got a couple of clients. We've got one client lined up to go and then another one very interested in taking it on. I haven't really promoted it. It's also good to get those videos. Cause I don't know. I don't know what it's like uh, live like this really straightforward. I think recording when you know, you can edit and come back much, much harder always stopping and starting and recutting and you know like, i don't like it. I, I didn't like what i said there i'm gonna do that again i saw you the it was a liverpool fashion show or something you were you're on a panel i saw i just got got yeah. the link and click through yeah talking yeah about I did. we were talking about say. yeah talking about pandemic and and uh, and how the pandemic had affected women in particular and i was i was invited on to get involved so yeah i did had a little bit of chat it was all good but i found it quite tiring this week um i had to leave a facebook group that i was in it was male dominated a uh, male only facebook group and i got a little bit tired of um a minority of men who didn't who thought that women who were afraid of their personal safety wasn't of a concern to them at all and reasons why and it, it's not about you know what about what about men and all this kind of thing it got a bit tiring i had to leave wasn't good yeah. for my emotional state so yeah sometimes it's better just to leave it and go i can't i can't argue with i can't reason with these people so yeah it's like on social media like the number of people who actually change their mind based on social media posts is pretty 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 low and like, some, i find social media quite stressful you see something and someone disagrees with you and you think can i be bothered to get into an argument with someone i don't even know yeah. so sometimes it's just like ignore it all you just got to I, walk away yeah. sometimes, haven't you? Picky battles. I did. I did. I might go back, but uh, for the moment, I was just like, I can't, I can't be here. I'm going to do things differently. Um, but anyway, um, Brian, um, um, it's great to have you on the show. Uh, yeah, so we've. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. We've. Oh, James. Right, well, yes. How are you, James? How are you, James? Show us your badge. That's a first, isn't it? That's a first. Just <laughs> so on. Yeah, nice. I'm just aware uh, of Brian's timing for today and his time restriction. That's I don't it. worry about that. <laughs> I, <laughs> right. I was I was doing fine this week, and then you just snubbed me, and now my week's going right off. Purely for the sake of completeness, I, I'll, I'll jump in and just uh, yeah, fine. Uh, I mean, you know, um, listen, I did think listen, the things you're talking about, right? We need to leave some good space for the tips at the end because my tip fits with just, I can't believe I've picked this tip. It's brilliant. <laughs> what you've just said and what Brian just said, it's going to be amazing. I saw you writing it's, something there and I was like, oh, it's got feel like we've set it gold there. Yeah, it's going to feel like we've totally set it up. Um, but yeah, you know, fine. Yeah, as what you say, kids are back at school. I think um, it's interesting what, what we've just said about, you know, how we're all feeling and COVID is, is dropping down the list, you know. It is part of the atmosphere, isn't it? You, you know, you move in houses, Brian says, you've got a lot going on. And then that's all within the, the COVID atmosphere as well, which you didn't even mention in the first instance, but it's just there and just adds to the stress and the, the worry. Which, but it's interesting that it's sort of beginning to drop down the, it still exists, but, you know, it's not your number one worry anymore sort of thing. You're kind of living with it, aren't we? I mean, it's, yeah. it's, compared to a year ago when a lockdown started, you're just kind of living with it. And you're so used to putting a mask on when you go to the shop now and it doesn't, still feels like you're going to hold it up at gunpoint, but... Yes. Yeah, but I mean, I think like, it's been a bad. I think it's been a bad week all round for anybody who's interested in this sort of stuff. Because obviously, particularly in the UK, I mean, we had International Women's Day, and it's been pretty awful since then. Frankly, in terms of uh, the government doesn't give a toss about equalities, and various people have left their LGBT uh, advisory group. Boris Johnson's not taking paternity leave. It turns out <gasps> Boris Johnson told a fib. Who could believe it? Uh, that was a bit depressing. And then, of course, we had the Sarah Everard stuff, and and as you say, and all the things about. 
uh, you know, not all men and all that. And I think just avoid social media on, on that front, I think is probably, there's an early tip for you because yeah. it's just, you don't get anything out of it. I think there's, there's fundamental questions we all need to grapple with, but you're not going to get any, any use of Twitter when it comes to grappling with fundamental issues on anything, I would suggest. So yeah, and then my back, I mean, my back seems a bit, doesn't seem very interesting. Or, or I had a bad back a few weeks ago, actually. And it's really <laughs> frustrating. <laughs> that, that's the interesting thing. It's like COVID in the sense that we know, I know it's going to be over. I know it's going to get better, but it's not yet. And that's really frustrating. But um, yeah. do you know what? I think my back is not that interesting. I suggest anybody <laughs> watching this or listening to it, if they want to put a comment saying they really want to hear the story of my back, then we'll have it. We'll do it next week. But uh, I think we'll just, uh, you know, uh, suffice to say it's not, not cured yet. Um, oh, well, soon. Um, yeah, so there we go. That, that's how I am. Sorry, Ian, go back. Now we'll, we'll go back to, to what you wanted to ask, Brian. <laughs> I've, I've lost my train of thought now. Um, Brian, this, this section of the, um, the conversation we call The Path. Um, and obviously, when we introduce you as co-founder of Men for Inclusion and also an author, and I wonder how, what came first for you? Um, you know, the book that we that, that you wrote was Confessions of a Working Father, which I believe was off a series of blog posts. So um, tell us about how how you came to be interested in, in fatherhood and inclusion more generally. Yeah, and I was, you know, as we were approaching this, um, I was just thinking back to when I became a father. Uh, you know, my kids are 12 and 14 now, so you know, it was a while ago. And it's funny because in, in running up, to being a father I was part of the baby center dads only moderator group so um I was just looking on baby center UK and they've still got this dad's group and it's still a very similar kind of approach like a few dads not saying much and loads of women like curious to know what they think and giving advice um so uh so yeah I was kind of always quite interested you know in, in being a dad and being an active dad and being part of a kind of community and not necessarily finding it um you know I've always you know wanted to be an active dad and you know my um my wife has always earned slightly more than me so you know naturally shared responsibilities i moved to luxembourg to follow her career um you know we kind of moved back and forth to london and then back again um so i've just you know it's kind of shocked me the, the reaction of other people and the working culture to you know dads who want to see their kids or help them get home from nursery when their babies and clearly they can't go on their own or, you know, or the partner's busy so I've just been a bit I was a bit shocked really when um, you know there was me you know leaving at work at a time when I could collect my kids or, or do things and then other colleagues were kind of shocked by that or surprised or you know even commenting on it um, you know you know even to the point, you know, I moved back to London for a few years and, um, you know, a CEO we had in a former company, he encouraged us all to get on Foursquare. I don't know if you remember it, you'd check in somewhere and be the mayor of a shop or something. Um, so um, I was, do you remember Foursquare? It's like talking about MySpace or Friends Reunited. But um, it was before you could check in on Facebook. And, they were, and so I was like, all right, I'll try it out. So in the morning, I, and I checked in, dropping my kids at the, the, the nursery and checked in at the tube, like whizzed over from Arsenal over to Paddington. And then I got to work and he was there looking at his phone saying, why are you late? You've been checking, you've been, no, it just kind of accused me of being late. He'd been tracking my movements. I was like, oh, I thought you asked us to do this for a bit of fun, not so you could tr track my movements. And this is a CEO who has a place in Marlborough, rents a flat by Paddington, and then walks around the office at ATM going, where is everyone? Um, so it's just like, and you, you arrive and there's, you know, it's all hot desking, which sounds exciting, but there's no desks left for you and you've got to go and sit miles away. And then your boss says, where are you? Why aren't you sitting next to me? And it just, and then you've got to rush back and, it just didn't feel like it was, you know, we moved back to Luxembourg just because it was better set up. But, um, you know, I was just really surprised because, it, you know, parents look, looking after their kids and working, like it's been happening for a long time. Why, you know, it's a lot harder than I thought it would be. And then the book, how did that come about then? So, you, you, you know, you obviously blogged about oh, yeah. it. Um, you know, presumably you got a good reaction to those blogs uh, such that you realised there was a, a constituency out there that weren't like that boss and that were genuinely interested in, in doing things differently or, or doing things normally. I don't know how you'd phrase it. Yeah, no, it's, it's funny. And I guess you mentioned inclusion and men for inclusion. And I guess that's how I came to write the book. So, you know, I've been involved in, you know, diversity, inclusion, voluntary work, and, you know, part of my job to some extent, you know, for about 20 years um, with my family, I come from like a mixed family of mixed disability. And, you know, there's other factors where we've had to kind of, you know, champion certain people's rights. And, um, yeah, and I think in, in the workplace as well, just kind of, you know, noticing some groups, 
you know, a, a marginalized or unrepresented and, and being like an alloy, just basically being a decent person and, you know, making sure everyone gets gets included. And I was working and, you know, in a, in a role where we were trying to get more women in, women in software engineering roles. And it just seemed like these, these big echo chambers, there was women in technology, Amsterdam was 2000 women and 20 men. They're all being told the, the benefits of women in technology and they're all nodding. It's like, well, of course, so they, they are women in technology and a load of recruiters. So of course they know that. And they're like, well, where are the men? I'm like, well, this is women in technology. Probably didn't occur to them to attend. Um, except for a few a few allies. I was just you know, thinking, like, how can we get more women in tech? And, you know, I was talking to someone called Nadia Nagamutu, and you know, her research shows that, you know, women get ahead not by attending Lean In circles. Well, I'm sure they they help, they help everyone, but it's where the, the men in their lives lean in with the with the three Cs, cleaning, you know, childcare and cooking and everything. And so, you know, the, the, my motivation for writing these posts in this book wasn't to necessarily help men, but was to help accelerate women's economic advancement. When people said, oh, you're, you're a champion for working dads, that was you know, a side effect. Um, and I was like, oh, and you know, this is the first time I've started being in, in events like this, which are actually focused on me. I've always been doing it to help someone else. And, and I think men, you know, white men in particular, um, you know, that having a space where we can actually be open about struggles that we've got or support that we need was quite new to me, really. And, you know, had to shake off a lot of guilt about that. And who am I to complain? I don't know if either of you have experienced that, but that's kind of how I got into it, just like supporting inclusion. And now we've kind of set up this group with a couple of other guys called Men for Inclusion, you know, recognizing you know, at the same time, a lot of men aren't in the inclusion conversation, or if they are, they're not necessarily approaching it in the right way. And, you know, what can we do? Uh, to kind of you know improve that and get more men into the conversation. I think it's yeah. really important. I went along. I think I went along to one of the first events. And yeah, thank you. That, yeah, and one, <laughs> my pleasure. And one of the things that struck me is that the name change. It's changed slightly, subtly, hasn't it? Since it, it has. First, yes, well spotted. First started. And I just wondered what the what kind of feedback and what kind of conversations went on um, that made that 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 led to that name changing slightly. Yeah, so um, at the time we did, you know, when I when I you know when we put it together, uh, we had a name male male allies for gender equality, MAGE, which I quite like as an acronym. Um, you know, I think originally, you know, me and the other guys have been talking, they'd been talking about allies for women. I was like, well, it's not for women, it's for gender equality. So we came up with that, and then we had a panel around, you know, do we actually need allies? And then, you know, as a group, we started looking at you know the four P's of marketing, you know, product price, place, and promotion. And we're like, if we're going to do this, we need to be more focused on what we want to do. And then there was you know, thinking more broadly than gender. So, you know, thinking about you know, inclusion more broadly and, and, you know, male allies, well, just men, really, all men can be involved in inclusion. You don't need a special badge um, to, to, to get involved in this. So that's where it came. And, you know, once we changed from this male allies thing, which I always find a bit uncomfortable to men for inclusion. I thought, oh, I can get behind that, update my LinkedIn profile. You know, I'm still working Amazon, but I had 300 people say, wow, you quit Amazon, that's exciting. And I was like, oh, well, if I did quit, then it sounds like it's a good idea one day, but yeah, maybe I'll go part-time at some point. But, um, but yeah, that's how it all kind of came about. Uh, that's how we changed the name, just to kind of broaden it. I think there's still a focus on gender, getting gender back on the agenda. Um, and uh, but you know, with a kind of intersectional, kind of broader view of inclusion. How much of that sort of view about inclusion is driven by your experiences with your own children? Yeah, I mean, uh, like uh, some of it came from my own family. So, you know, my stepmother, my, my mum died when I was six um, and my dad remarried and we had like a mixed family. Um, and so, you know, my, my stepmom is a big, big advocate for, you know, women's rights. And also my youngest brother has cerebral palsy. So, you know, disability rights, um, you know, in my sister, there's, in, my, in my family, there's you know, different sexualities as well. And <coughs> coming through to my, my kids now, I mean, you know, Daniel, my 12 year old is very much a boy's boy. Um, and whereas you know, Gabby, my 14 year old is you no know, gender non-conforming, transgender. And so, you know, when it's, when it's your younger brother, when it's your sister, when it's one of your own children going through these things, it, it really kind of, you know, comes from a, you know, a deep, kind of heartfelt place rather than this kind of theoretical you know diversity of thought better innovation better for the bottom line I mean that's not my top priority it's more about people I care about having a shit time in life because things aren't organized in an inclusive way so yeah for me it definitely comes from a, an, an emotional kind of caring place um yeah so you know you're feeling some of these things firsthand 
Is there a, um, this is maybe a, a big question and the answer might be no to it, but is there a sort of overarching definition of allyship? Because allyship is certainly something that, you know, I've been talking about coming out of the COVID thing and in terms of, uh, you know, the future workplace, there's a lot to be said for allies, um, you know, between men, women, in a sort of more general way, more empathy, and that leads to allyship. Uh, and obviously there's been a lot of talk about allyship this week around, uh, you know, women not feeling safe in the UK and how men should be allies. And, and you know, that's a, that's one part of it. I don't know, is there a, is it possible to, to come up with a sort of universal definition of what allyship and being an ally means? And if so, what is it? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, you know, I guess, it, you know, what the impression I have is that it's someone uh, who's going to advocate or supporting a cause for a particular demographic of which they're you know, not part of that demographic. So if I'm advocating for LGBTQ rights or if I'm advocating for women or for, or for disability or for you know, Black Lives Matter um, or for people with autism um, you know, or someone who's a veteran or you know, someone you know, with PTSD or something, I, I don't know, these are all things I don't, I'm not experiencing myself, but I'm supporting someone else. So I um, mean, you could bring in like a military analogy, couldn't you? Like the allies kind of supporting someone else who was under attack you know, even though they themselves weren't under attack. Um, yeah, it's very difficult, you know, and it can be used in positive and negative ways. Like, you know, it's, it's not ally, it's advocate we want. And like, is it? Um, but yeah, and then the definition of ally, I mean, what, what do you both think? What, what would your definition be? Yeah, I think that's a good definition. I think the good thing about that definition is it leaves it open for how that manifests itself. So what that actually means in practical terms can differ according to the person, the circumstances, and the group that you are uh standing up for and you know in what scenario are you standing up for whether that is you're know, walking a female friend home from the pub imagine going to the pub uh or whether that is you know walking into a meeting and saying hello there's only one woman in this meeting that's not cool um yeah i think it, it depends on the the, the situation but i think that's a good definition because it leaves it open i don't know what i'm sure you have thoughts on it here yeah, I think it also comes from a place of seeking empathy and not just sort of taking the world as you see it that benefits you. Um, and I think it, it, it's being aware and I think actively seeking out awareness of other people's struggles that aren't your own and therefore and trying to do something about it and not just saying, well, it's, I, I'm all right, you know, it doesn't affect me, you know, this this whole you know, the concept this week about it's not all men. Well, of course, it's not all men, but, you know, I, one of the things that, you know, I was explaining how I actively walk on the other side of the road if I'm walking home late at night from the train station, if I know there's a woman in front of me, I will, I will cross the road to avoid coming up behind her, for instance, and and just being aware of those things and then, and then doing something about it, hopefully. And, you know, even, you know, even if it's something relatively minor. Hmm. Yeah, I think yep, right. totally. yeah, but I think it's, a, it's also a work in progress. I think that's the, another key thing about allyship is that you know that is a good definition you come up with, it, Brian. But also, you'd be wrong to say, well, that's the definition of allyship. Now I know what it means because it will evolve and it will change. And as I say, it depends on the circumstances. I think that's a, a crucial part of it is that you know being open to other people saying, well, this is what allyship means to me. Okay. Yeah, totally. <laughs> um, Conversation. Should we, um, should we move on to the tips? Because I know we're, we're, we're slightly pushed for time. Um, and I'll, I'll go first because this fits in really well with what we've been talking about. I've been saving this one up for a few weeks, but strangely enough, <laughs> it just is perfect this week. Um, it's a book called Conflicted by Ian Leslie. Uh, Ian Leslie is the king of centrist dads, right? He is, uh, you know, basically he's my I, new god. There's a bit in it about Waco and the negotiations around that. I, I would go and join a wacky cult led by Ian Leslie because he is you know, <laughs> a cult of centrist dads. Um, why arguments are tearing us apart and how they can bring us together. It's just really interesting stuff about how to disagree well. Uh, the fundamental point of it is that disagreement is part of the human condition and it is how you actually achieve, how you move things forward is to disagree. But of course, you've got to disagree well, not show each other on the internet. That's not very helpful. And it just, the stuff we've just been talking about, for example, Facebook groups where there's people being idiots. Uh, you know, do you engage with them? Do you try and disagree well with them? I don't know the answer to this. I tried to disagree well with some people in the virtual pub last night. And there came a point at which I said, do you know what, that is not true. And I won't let an untruth, you know, something that is palpably untrue pass. Ian Leslie would probably throw me out of his, his cult of conflicted for that, because he's like, no, you've got to listen to people and yada, yada, yada. But I think it's a really interesting book. And I think it doesn't, it applies across everything we've spoken about. You know, Brian's talking about uh, domestic strife about whether to go to the sofa shop or not. 
you know, I think that there are lessons from how to disagree well there. I know you don't go to the sofa shop. Uh, anyway, our sofa shops are all shut, so we don't have to worry about those. Sort of um, <laughs> First of you know, all, uh, you know, I think it's the stuff we talk about, the stuff about if you want to, you know, forward the dad's agenda, which we all do, if, and I appreciate um, you might have different definitions of what the dad's agenda is or what that means. I'm using it as a very uh, broad shorthand you're going to have to disagree with people. You're going to have people who say, men don't matter. Dads aren't the important thing. We need to be progressing women. And you have to make the case and say, well, no, if we look after dads, you will progress women. You know, it's all connected. Um, I think disagreeing better is, is really important going forward in terms of, you know, whether that's in your household, whether that is in your workplace, whether that is, you know, in the public sphere and all the stuff that's been going on this week about, you know, whether you want to argue with somebody about not all men. Um, I think uh, it's a really interesting book. I haven't quite finished it yet, but you'll see I've got my got my highlighter in it. That's how, that's how seriously I'm taking it. It has to be pretty serious for me to highlight it. Um, so that's my tip this week, uh, how to disagree better. I think is a, a really important skill that we all need to learn. Um, and you can get it off Amazon if you want, I suppose. Although... I got mine off bookshop.org to print all, to help all the good local, booksellers. Yeah, to help the local, to help the local <laughs> um, Absolutely. You mentioned something. You, did you say centrist dads? I'm just, yeah. I, I hadn't heard that term before. Oh, has this not made it over to Luxembourg? This, this, no, this, like, could you enlighten me? Uh, this was, oh, it was the, the Corbyn era in, uh, in British politics that the Corbynistas would use it as a, uh, an insult. Uh, against people like me, centrist dads. So middle-aged, middle-class people who uh, are not idiots. <laughs> you know, I wear the I wear the badge of Dude. centrist dad with pride. I'm like, yeah, I'm a centrist dad. Bring it. You know, I believe in the centre and I believe in being reasonable and you know, have, disagreeing well. Whereas obviously, a lot of the corporatistas believe in. I don't know, really burning down capital or something. I don't know what they believe in. But, um, so yeah, centrist dad was kicking around as, a, as an insult, but I very much wear it as a, a, a badge of pride. I, I, you know, out and proud centrist dad. Um, very good. <laughs> but yeah, I, I don't know if Ian Leslie would as well, but he, he liked me as he, he's that way inclined. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's my tip. Uh, the tips have slightly changed to recommendations recently. But they're supposed to be tips about, you know, I don't know how to cope with lockdown and how to cope with, with parenting and stuff like that. We've slightly veered into recommendations sometimes but um yeah. maybe Ian's about to prove me a lie okay. Ian, what's your tip this week it, it's both a recommendation and a tip so um previous guest of ours rachel vike uh recorded a video and she talked about um how to communicate with your kids and ask good questions to your children now that they're back at school and she used a great analogy and we'll put a link in the comments um she talked about the rose the thorn and the banana peel so talk about something that's gone really well which is the rose Talk about something that a thorn which hasn't gone so well and something that was funny that was a banana peel and start by um, start by presenting your own uh, version of that and then uh, then start to have a conversation with your kids who you know now they're back to school high school gone mm, it's all right um, and try and break that cycle so so we'll put a comment in there but that was a good little tip I thought yeah I like that I've heard roses and thorns before and I think in, when I read Barack Obama's book he talks about doing roses and thorns but though the banana peel that's a good good addition I think we've, we've tried it with our kids and it's very much yeah sure whatever like uh, <laughs> but, uh, uh, you've got to pick the right point I think that's the other part of that yeah straight after school interestingly this, I don't know it might come up as a, a recommendation further down the road but my daughter's reading a book about uh, for teenagers about why your parents are so annoying um, and <laughs> Well, part of it is, you know, there's a reason why when you get home from school, kids are, are sort of not in control at school. So if you then say to them the minute they get in the door, how was school? That just reminds them of not being in control. So they don't want to talk about it at that point. So according to this uh, book, and it's written by a sort of psychology fella, it's sort of, you know, leave it till later in the day uh, when they don't want, you know, there might be a bit yeah. more, more keen to talk about it. But Rachel Vex is the queen of tips, isn't she? <laughs> <laughs> we had the circle of control a few weeks ago. That, that was one of hers. That's a great one. <laughs> And, like and of course, she's been on the podcast. And yes, I've been doing rose thorns and banana peels this week with with varying degrees of success. But you know, I think yeah. it's a, worth a try. It's worth a try. I found that with uh, with my with Daniel when he was a bit younger, walking him home from school, and definitely, how is your day? Is not good. And, and to be honest, when I finish a day at work, I don't want to talk about it. It's pretty boring. I'm just glad to be over. So I just started saying, what are you looking forward to this evening? Or what do you want to do when you get home? Which is what you would ask an adult. <laughs> like, um, so uh, he's like, oh, playing on Minecraft or, or doing this. But that's definitely a, a better way. And, you know, I kind of miss those days, um, you know, walking my kids home from school. I don't do it anymore. So, you know, now every morning, like my kids are going to school one, one week off, one week in. But no, make a point, like with Daniel, he's, you know, he's got secondary school now, you know, seeing him off at the door, 
waving him off and just kind of like spending a few moments watching him go away because it's you know, one day that's not going to happen anymore and you know he'll be off so i don't know i don't mean really, i don't mean my kids grow up so fast and you know i think for a while i was you know lamenting you know when they were smaller and we're doing bedtime stories now i'm just trying to like capture all these moments you know these fleeting moments and, and cherishing them so i'd encourage dads to do that uh there's plenty of time to work and but these kind of small moments where you can you can kind of capture your kids and these uh so that's my recommendation it's a good one it's, a, it's one for the ages but it's one that i think um <laughs> you need to say it you need to remind yourself yeah. of it. i think it's a really important one that it's very easy to lose sight of like all the best recommendations like all the best ideas it's it's simple but you know you sometimes lose lose sight of it so yeah. no, really yeah a very good tip I yeah, think on, the, on a disagreeing one as well, you know, my wife and I were just disagreeing about a certain point, uh, which is quite <laughs> um, you know, a few fireworks going on. And ultimately, I was just like, right, let me figure out where she's coming from. So there's something that she wanted me to read. And so I just stayed up like, till midnight and read it. And then the next day, you know, I didn't agree with it all, but at least I could see where she was coming from. And you know, it meant a lot to her that I you know, tried to figure out where she was coming from. So you know, I still disagreed, but at least I could, you know, I, I could understand. I was like, oh, okay, something's clicked about why she thought things a certain way, and I could then make her feel understood and then disagree with her. <laughs> you need to read the book. Forget it. The tip doesn't apply to Brian because he's basically doing it already. I mean, that's the it's not that disagreeing itself is bad. It's about doing it well and making it productive. And okay, I need to read the book. I've, um, you've got me interested. You've done it. You're doing it already. You, you, should, write book. you should have written the book, not read it. Anyway, sorry. Um, we're getting, we're, 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 you know, we've got important things. You've got to, got to get off this. Uh, it must be time for Ian to do the credits. It is. Um, Brian, um, we talked about Confessions of Working Father, which people can get from all good bookshops, hopefully, but certainly from Amazon. Um, uh, where can people go if they want to connect with you and learn more about what you do in Men for Inclusion? Uh, they can connect with me on LinkedIn and uh, with Men for Inclusion, we've actually just launched a, a website. Um, it's still kind of, you know, in draft form, but it's it's live. So, uh, you know, I'm trying to cut down the amount of time I spent on LinkedIn. So if I don't reply to you straight away, then then don't worry. But uh, yeah, LinkedIn's probably a, gr a great place to connect with me. You know, feel free to just send me a connection request or a message. Um, uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, hopefully hear from some people and happy to connect uh, with other dads. Perfect. Well, thank you very much for coming on the show and talking to us about your path and your journey. Um, James, thank you for sharing how your week went. Um, I'm, I'm glad we got that in as well. <laughs> and hopefully next week we will actually meet up because I, I did I, I did turn James down this week. Uh, I thought the weather was a bit ropey. Actually, we got loads of rain down here about the time when we were due to meet. So maybe I was right. Anyway, um, so we will do that. We will do that next week. So thank you very much, everyone, for watching and listening. This has been episode number 37 of Lockdown Dads. We'll be back next week. We have a few more weeks left. I think we have two more episodes left before we break for Easter, and we will see what happens after that. But do, uh, do give it a like and subscribe if you've enjoyed the content, and we will see you again next week. Thank you very much, everyone. <laughs>